Okay, continuing on with our section, uh, we're now looking at what's called a planar lamina. So the idea is that we have a flat plate of some material and it has uniform density rho. And our goal is to find the center of mass. So we have two curves, f of x and g of x. And we're looking in an area from x is a to x is b. So for starters, our mass of this area, density times area. So our density is rho. We're going to assume again uniform density, so not a variable, so we can park it in front of the integral. And area would just be integral from a to b of, in this case, f of x minus g of x times dx. Recall also that the moment is mass times distance. So for this, we're going to consider putting a little rectangle inside of our area and we're going to consider a dot in the middle of our rectangle as well. So, so for our rectangle, the mass, density is rho, and our area for a rectangle here, the f of x minus g of x, so that's uh, the height of our rectangle, times the width of the rectangle, width of the rectangle being delta x. So the distance depends on if you're talking about distance from the x-axis or y-axis. WRT, common abbreviation for with respect to. Uh, so we'll start with respect to the, uh, we'll start with x-axis. So finding the middle of this rectangle, if we know this height and we know this height and we want the midpoint, midpoint add up and divide by two. So f of x plus g of x over 2. If we're talking with respect to the y-axis, the midpoint of it is just whatever the x. So then our Moment, remember, is mass times distance. So our moment with respect to the x-axis, our mass, same from the previous page, rho times the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. We're going to hold off on the dx. We're going to scooch that over. We need a distance in there. 
So our distance from the x-axis, that would be our f of x plus g of x all over 2. Our moment with respect to the y-axis, mass again, same as before, integral from a to b, density, uniform density, rho, f of x minus g of x. And our distance from the y-axis is whatever value we plug in for x. And of course we multiply by dx. So in our center of mass, x bar, y bar, x bar, moment with respect to the y-axis over the total mass. Similarly, y bar, moment with respect to the x-axis over the total mass. All right, so that's a lot to take in. Let's run through an actual example here. So we're going to find the center of mass for the planar lamina BDD common abbreviation for bounded, bounded by f of x is opposite of x minus 3 quantity squared plus 5 and g of x is 1. So a quick little sketch here. So here's our y equals 1 for the g of x. f of x is a parabola, vertex at 3, 5, opening down. So this is the area that we're talking about. We want the center of mass of this area. Now you may have some idea of where x bar should be already with this nice neat pretty symmetry we have on the parabola. We should have a little bit of a suspicion as to where that will be. So the, the real question is uh, on the vertical axis, where is our center going to be? Well, one of the bits of information we need is where are these endpoints? Just set the functions equal to one another. So 4 is x minus 3 quantity squared. So I subtracted 1 on both sides, added x minus 3 quantity squared to both sides. So plus or minus 2 is x minus 3. So x is 3 plus or minus 2. So x is 1 or x is 5. So we have our endpoints as well. So our mass, we're going to assume again uniform density rho. And our area then, integral from, we figured out, 1 to 5. Top function was f of x, bottom function was g of x. times dx. So our mass, rho, integral from 1 to 5, a little cleanup on the inside here. Uh, so I want the opposite of x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then I have a plus 5 minus 1, so there's a plus 4, times dx. So mass m, rho, integral from 1 to 5, of uh, opposite of x squared plus 6x and then we have minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5 times dx. All right, a little bit more room here so we're going to lift that on over. Sure I'm centered okay here, there we go, that should work fine. Okay, so then our mass m is rho times doing the antiderivative opposite of x squared 
x squared becomes x cubed. So I'll need a negative one third. Uh, 6x, x to the first becomes x to the second. If I want a plus 6 out front, I'll need a plus 3 here. So differentiate that. 3 by 2 gave us the plus 6 we had originally. x to the second becomes x to the first when we differentiate. And antiderivative of a constant is, of course, a first power. And we're looking at this between the 1 and 5. So a little bit of plugging and chugging later, and our mass, M, is 32 rho over 3. So now we look at our moments. Same problem continuing on, it's just the next, next component that we're looking at. Let me make another just quick rough sketch just because it's easier to have reference to it. So here's our rectangle somewhere within our area and our nice little target for the center of the rectangle. So moment with respect to x, moment remember is mass times distance. So our mass integral from 1 to 5 minus x squared plus 6x minus 5 times our distance. Distance from the x-axis, we're looking at finding the mean of the top and bottom of the rectangle. So that is f of x plus g of x over 2. So f of x was opposite of x minus 3 quantity squared plus 5. So there's our f of x plus our g of x was 1 over 2. And we multiply by dx. So then a little bit of cleanup. So a moment with respect to x, hang on to our row, integral from 1 to 5, and we'll do a little bit of simplifying there. Uh, I'm going to hang on to this opposite of x squared plus 6x minus 5 for the moment, uh, and we'll do a little simplifying on this other guy. So we have opposite of x squared instead of a minus 6x when we foil this out the minus outside will flip it to a plus 6x and instead of a plus 9 flipping it we have a minus 9 minus 9 plus 5 so minus 4 and we have our plus 1 all over 2 times dx so m sub x moment with respect to x row integral from 1 to 5 of opposite of x squared plus 6x minus 5 times negative 1 half x squared uh, minus 3x my apologies plus 3x plus 3x I already flipped the sign and then uh, minus 4 plus 1 is a minus 3 so minus 3 halves times dx then we multiply all these out So I'll start with just distributing the minus x squared. So that is half x to the fourth. Then we have a minus 3x cubed and plus 3 halves x squared. Then we distribute the plus 6x. So 6x by negative 1 half x squared minus 3x cubed. And we have a plus 18x squared. And let's see, 6 halves is 3, so minus 9x. And last but not least, we distribute our negative 5. So we have 
plus 5 halves x squared, negative 5 times positive 3x, negative 15x, and negative 5 times negative 3 halves, positive 15 halves. And we'll close it up, multiply by dx. So moment about x, row, integral from 1 to 5. So then we're just hunting down like terms. The fourth power is the only one of its kind. We'll just bring that along. Half x to the fourth. The cubes, uh, I've got one here, one here. I don't see any others, so minus 6x cubed. Uh, our squares we have, let's see. We have a plus 3 halves x squared, plus 5 halves x squared, so that's 8 halves or 4x squared. And 4x squared plus 18x squared is 22x squared. Our first power is minus 9x minus 15x minus 24x. And plus 15 halves times dx. Okay, so we simplified as much as we can. So uh, this much of it was just algebra, just uh, splitting the fraction, multiplying things out, and combining the like terms. That, that part's all algebra, a little time-consuming, but nothing too painful. So a moment about x, rho times, now we integrate. x to the fourth is now x to the fifth. I had a one-half, I also need a one-fifth, so one tenth. x to the third becomes x to the fourth. We want to end up with a negative sixth there. So we have a negative three halves here. Four halves is two. Two by three is six. Uh, x squared becomes x cubed. I want a 22 as a coefficient at the end, so 22 thirds x to the first becomes x squared, so that makes this guy a negative 12 to get there. And of course the antiderivative of a constant is a first power, and then we evaluate from 1 to 5. So a moment about x, uh, we end up at 416 row over 15. All right, so then we look at the moment about y. Again, it's still mass times distance. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit shorter than the moment about x was, a little bit less uh, long drawn out algebra. So just a reminder, moment is mass times distance. So density rho, integral from, we're still looking at 1 to 5. So our mass, f of x minus g of x. Uh, we can just jump to the minus x squared plus 6x minus 5 for that guy. Uh, our distance, remember now we're with respect to the y-axis. To get to the center there, this coordinate is just x and multiply by dx. So moment about y, rho integral from 1 to 5. This time the algebra is a little cleaner. Minus x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5x times dx. So our moment about y, rho times negative 1 fourth x to the fourth. x cubed, so that'll be a 2x cubed. That'll give me the 6 we have there minus 5 halves x squared. And again, we're going from 1 to 5 on that one. So a moment about y, uh, we end up at 32 row. All right, so what we know so far, our mass, if you recall, was 32 row over 3. Moment about x ended up at 416 row over 15. 
and moment about y, we have that right there as 32 rho. So x bar, when we're placing our center about the, uh, uh, as far as how far left or right to go, notice the distance is changing with respect to the y-axis. So we need m sub y on that one. Uh, that's kind of the most common mistake in this one is to actually have that, what you would sort of logically expect of x's on both of them. Uh, so that is 32 rho divided by 32 thirds rho. So 32 rho over 1 times 3 over 32 rho, which is just 3. That should be hopefully what you expected when uh, we noticed the symmetry at the beginning. That parabola was symmetric about the line that goes through the vertex, and the vertex was at 3, 5. So it should make sense that x bar ended up as 3. Uh, y bar, that one was the more sort of challenging one to figure out. Uh, how far up or down to go? Again, up and down, I'm traveling away from the x-axis, so I need moment about x divided by the mass. Uh, so 416 rho over 15 divided by mass. So 416 rho over 15 times 3 over 32 rho. Uh, notice the rows drop out, and we end up at 13 fifths or two and three fifths so that is where our center of mass is for this shape three for the x two and three fifths for the y put a point there and our shape will balance nice and pretty okay then our last new topic in this section, the theorem of Pappus. A uh, little bit less area on the algebra than our center of mass on the planar lamina. A little, little bit less messy coming up. So if R is a region in a plane, We're going to rotate about line L. We're going to make one assumption, R and L do not meet. They don't intersect. Then the volume of that object is going to be 2 pi times the radius times A. So A is the area of region R. R is the radius to the center of mass, sometimes called the centroid of are. Uh, so for this one we're going to consider a torus. My apologies, they don't spell it the way uh, you spell the car. Torus is basically a donut shape. And for this one, our torus is going to be, uh, uh, we'll look at a cross section that goes through, let's say we'll have x squared, oh geez, x minus five quantity squared plus y squared equals two squared. All right, so this is going to be a, sort of a cross section. This is our region. Our region is a circle you should be able to tell at a glance uh, the center of that circle is at 
five zero with a radius of two. So we're going to go two in each direction, circle them up as best we can, freehand. There we go. So this is our cross section, and we're going to rotate this about the x, or I'm sorry, the y axis. The reason we can't rotate this about the x axis, uh, actually, a few. If we rotate it about the x-axis, we've simply made a sphere, um, and we can't use this theorem anyway because R and L cannot meet, and x-axis goes right through our region. So we're going to spin this around the y-axis. So A is the area of the region. Well. This is just a circle with radius 2. Area then is pi r squared, pi by 2 squared, or 4 pi square units. The center of mass on this one, not a lot of heavy calculations needed. The center of a circle is its center of mass. So from the y-axis, to this dot in the center of our circle is 5 units, so R is 5. So diff two different radii here, the radius of the crosscut section. This one is the radius from our axis of rotation to the center of mass of our region. So then our volume by the theorem of Pappas, 2 pi times r times a. So our volume is 40 pi squared cubic units. If I change just one thing on there, Let's say we switch over uh, and we rotate about x equals 1. Area is still the same, 4 pi square units. But our radius Remember, the center is at 5, 0, so 1 to 5 is 4 units now. So our volume 2 pi times the new radius of 4 units times the area is still 4 pi square units. So we have 1632 pi squared cubic units. Okay, so from 7, 6, uh, you should be able to handle now 1 to 29 odd and 51 and 53. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Stay safe out there. Thank you.